to the Lion Enclosure here at Melbourne Zoo. My name's Dave, and I'm here today to chat all things Lion Boys. And I do say Lion Boys because we have got two boys here at Melbourne Zoo. They're trotting down to see us, and I think that's because the keepers have arrived. Uh, so I will ask for this encounter that is about to happen, that if everybody steps back from this white fence, just give a little bit of space around there, and if that's the case, and we're all very well behaved human beings, we'll get to see some uh, interesting behaviour from our lion boys. But before that gets started, I am going to tell you a little bit about these two. These are two three-year-old lions. They came from our uh, group out at Werribee. They joined us a bit over a year ago. Their names are Nadidi and Zubiri. And they are a, what we might describe as a coalition of lions. So anybody who's spent any time around big cats will notice that tigers tend to spend ten time by themselves, they're solitary. Snow leopards, anybody who was at my snow leopard talk before will have learned that they are indeed solitary as well. But lions, they uh, like to spend time together. They're social big cats. They're the only social big cats, in fact. And whilst we're all very aware of what a lion pride is, which has got that dominant male in there, it's probably got some adult lionesses as well, maybe three to seven or so of them. It's got a bunch of cubs in there as well. They spend time as a unit. You've got to wonder about those male grown-up lions who aren't in a pride. Well, they band together with other lions, other male lions, and they form a coalition. Now, as our keepers come up to the front there, I do ask that everybody just take a nice clean step back from that white fence for me. Everybody takes a bit of a step back. So just one more step back for those of you who haven't quite done that yet. Thanks very much. And if we ask that we do stay back. Oh, sorry, there's one still there. We ask that you stay back for this encounter. This is actually a really, really exciting thing for us to watch. And I'll tell you what's happening in a second. But it is also something that means that we need to be uh, a little bit humble about the fact that we can watch this. That means that we need to be nice and quiet, give our keepers some space, and it also means respecting your fellow uh, fellow uh, uh, audience members because some of you might not be able to see if there's somebody tall standing in front of you. So make sure you're standing back and making sure that everybody gets the chance to look properly. Now what's happening here is our keepers are going to be having a bit of a training session with our lion boys. Now you might understand, you might want to wonder what's a training session and how does that involve these wild animals? You can't train a lion and we're not interested in training them in uh, making them domesticated in any way. What we're interested in here is their behaviours in a medical sense. We're going to be asking the lion boys to present certain simple medical behaviours and that's so our keepers can look at the animals, make sure that they're not exhibiting any uh, unusual movements, make sure that we can look over their body conditions and be satisfied that they're in good, healthy nick. During these sessions, if our keepers notice anything untoward, they can take note of it. They can continue to monitor that over a number of sessions. And if needs be, they can call in, in uh, call in our on-site vets to look them over if needs be. So this is a really important part of our medical care for our lions. And it's essentially is asking the animals to take part in their own medical treatment. So it's actually really uh, mentally stimulating for them as well. Now, they're obviously not doing this out of the goodness of their lion hearts. They get something out of it too. They get a little bit of positive reinforcement for each successfully performed behaviour. So the sort of behaviours that we might look for range vary quite a bit. It looks like Arthur, just to the side there, is looking for a calming behaviour from our lion boy. I think that Zubiri, can't quite tell from here, but uh, he is uh, then, as a result, if he successfully performs that behaviour, he gets a bit of a meaty treat in this instance, a little chunk of meat. Once he's performed that behaviour, we reward it with that positive reinforcement. So this is asking him to uh, perform a certain behaviour which is going to uh, uh, mean that we can check over their body condition. We just saw being able to raise their head is very helpful as well. And we can often build them up to more complex behaviours over a number of sessions, over a number of years. We can even get to the point where we can uh, ask our lion boys to receive an injection. That injection usually will be saline or something that's not going to affect them in any way, but that time that we need to take them to the vets on site, 
we can actually have the right amount of the knockout drug in there, which means that we can safely move the boy without that stressing them out. It doesn't stress our keepers out as well, which is really important. This is another great behavior. We can see uh, Zabirian and uh, Nididi are showing us their bellies there. The keepers get the chance to make sure they haven't scratched or hurt themselves there. Uh, we can also look, check over the poor condition as well, make sure that they haven't got anything caught in there. And we can also observe if they're comfortable doing that behavior. If that's a difficult behavior for them to do, if we see that there's some knee, signs of knee joint pain or something there, that means we could check them over and monitor that. So if there's older animal, we can monitor to see how their, uh, their joints are doing and that sort of thing. So this is just one example of the sort of care that our uh, keepers provide for these animals. And we won't do this at the same time every day. It will be a different uh, thing that we will provide at 12.30 each day. Sometimes it will be a meat scatter. Our keepers will call the boys off display. The keepers will lock up, make sure this all nice and safe for them when they enter. And they'll scatter some food throughout the enclosure for the animals. That will then encourage them to use their wild behaviours and their wild scents when they come back into the enclosure to find and search for that food. Another thing that we might do is might go in there and we might sprinkle a bunch of herbs and spices around the enclosure. Something that's going to stimulate their fantastic sense of smell. We might string up a big chunk of uh, beef from one of these branches. That means the boys will have to work together to get access to that food. That's behaviour that's a bit more challenging for them. They need to uh, uh, work beyond just trying to hoover up their food from a silver platter. That wouldn't be much fun for them and it wouldn't be uh, very challenging for them either. So there's all sorts of things that our keepers will think about in order to challenge these animals, in order to provide them with something that is enriching and that will challenge and provide and stimulate their wild senses. So if you've got any ideas, we would love to hear them as well. Now I was saying before that these boys are what we'll call a coalition of lions and these coalitions, these groups of male Lions, these bachelor groups, as it were, will uh, be found in numbers of two, three to uh, you know a dozen or so out in the wild. They can work together, they will hunt together, they will challenge each other, they will fight together. They'll also be building up their strength. And whilst they're building up their strength, they're hoping one day that they might take the uh, opportunity to challenge a dominant male lion within a pride. The pride unit, as we said before, has that one dominant male, usually three to nine female lionesses, and uh, a number of cubs. Now, if a dominant lion does receive a challenge from an incoming male, there's a few ways that could end. Either the dominant male is successful in holding off the challenge, they return to life as normal. Or they are either dehosed, which means they will have to go off to lick their wounds join up with maybe another coalition of lions, or perhaps worse, obviously, and in the wilds of Africa, there can be fights to the death. Now that incoming lion, I can tell you now that one of the first things he's likely to do, unfortunately, is probably do away with any of the younger cubs. And that's obviously pretty vicious, but it is actually pretty good for the genetic lines of the animals in these, uh, these prides. It means that there's a lot of variation and can also ensure that the, uh, the, her, the pride numbers continue into the future. Now we all probably know the story of Simba and Scar and Ufasa, the Lion King. And you might recall that when Scar comes in and he defeats Mufasa, he actually says to Simba, hey, Simba, get out of here. You're free to go. He banishes him. Now, I know we've been coached to think of Scar as a villain, but I'm telling you right now, that's a really, really nice thing for an incoming lion to do. So, Scar, I think, is a little bit misunderstood, personally. He's not quite as bad. Another, another mistake that I think the Lion King makes with Scar is he's got this big, thick, uh, dark mane. And that scene is making him look nefarious and evil. Actually... Having a big, thick, dark mane is seen as a, a desirable quality in a potential mate. The thicker and the darker the mane, the more likely that that lion's going to be doing well on a hot day. They have to deal with a lot of heat. And so that's seen as a genetic, you know, uh, genetic uh, favourable trait. So Scar would actually be seen probably as quite an attractive mating partner out in the wild for real. I was very 
happy to see when they did the re-imagined uh, version of the film this last year that the new version of Scar, very tattered, mottled mane, scars across his face. That's much more in line with the unattractive line. He would, he would have a lot of trouble picking up a, a potential mate, I think, in the real world. Now these two boys, as I said before, we do work overdrive and provide them with enrichment. And uh, that's something that I also recommend that you do for your cats at home. I've got a big fat orange cat at home. Oh, they've got names, Lola. 